Oh yes, yes, joy, 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 joy. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. Everywhere, everywhere, but God, but God, but God. Oh yes, oh oh yes, oh yes, oh we do we do pray, we do pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. Yes. Yes, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. All right. It's God be praised. Uh, you know, Bishop Anderson, for those of you who couldn't hear, um, he was speaking about um, the, the gun violence and, you know, what our mayor and everyone else have been saying. And, um, you know, to know that so many lives are being lost. And it's not just germane to New York City alone. It's all around the country. It's around the world. It's in it's in Jamaica. It's 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 everywhere. And uh, you know, if my people, right? We have to keep praying. Do not give up hope. Keep praying. Keep trusting God because God is real. He is real. Because of Jesus, he takes care of us. Glory to God. And so this morning, I want to say good morning, good night, good afternoon. I need to send someone. Uh, as I said before, y'all know there's some people are not seeing the um, the video. I don't know what's happening, but it's yeah, it's on. It's on. Oh, it's not as yeah. I'm on. Just let me see if I can I tag you. Hold on. Okay. And <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you bear with us, folks, just for a second. Um, you know, it's, I don't, I, I don't know why this is happening, but I hope, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. So let me see. Hold on. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me see. Okay. All right, so, okay, so, well, here we are. Good morning, folks. It's communion morning, so we're not even going to be, we're going to give praise, give thanks, give honor, get your grape juice, get your crackers, your matzah, your bread, your water, if you, ha if you don't have your grape juice, okay, because it's communion morning. And we know communion morning is done with joy, communion we, we partake joyfully the communion meal because Jesus paid the price for us to partake of this special meal. Okay, and so we're not going to be denied it in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, come with me, guys. This morning's message is uh, 
is entitled what the covenant of eating i know that when we we eat our communion meal we tend to take it lightly some some of us not all of us um hold on one second one more person yikes 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 I, hold on okay all right so yeah we tend to take it very some of us tend to take it very lightly right but let me tell you something we need to know that yeah we need to know that there is such a joy in um taking communion now eating we eat like every single day we eat right we eat for sustenance we eat basically to continue our lives right where if we if we have no appetite that's a sign that is saying something is working against the the process of life right to go in the opposite direction but god is amazing now remember adam and eve ate humanity into sin which brought sickness poverty and death but because of Yeshua Jesus, today we eat our way out of all of that through the communion meal. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Now, what does eat mean? To eat means it means to take in through your mouth, to ingest, to chew, to swallow, or to destroy. Did you know that? Eat means to destroy. Who knew that? Who knew that? Come on. Now, the Hebrew word for eat is hachel, hochel, right? It is aleph, kaf, lamed. I've, I've shown you these letters already, so I didn't bring, I didn't write it to show you. I've shown you the aleph. By now, you should know aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which means the sacrificial ox, right? Kaf is the open palm. Lamed is a, the shepherd's staff, or it means learning. It's a symbol of authority, the shepherd's staff, the symbol of authority. And it also means learning, Lamed. Now, interestingly, what I find interesting is that in order to walk in, in, in uh, effectively in authority, what? There are instructions that we must follow. Who agrees with that? In order for us to have success in anything, listen, if you, first, the, the, my laptop, the camera, my phone, <laughs> by the way, let me just say, oh, let me pause and say, thank each and every one of you who wished me happy birthday. I still haven't seen some of your wishes. I mean, some folks have called me. Folks were concerned. They were like, so we haven't heard from you. We were calling you, texting you. You're not responding. It's not like you not to respond. And it isn't. So I got a new phone. As you can see, you see the case. It's a bigger phone. My, my family gave me a new phone. for my One of my gifts of my birthday was that. And so we had to transfer you know i didn't want to lose my data i didn't want to lose you know, i have notes i have things to do my my appointments all of that you know meeting dates and so forth and so on so in order to transfer everything guess what realize that this phone didn't have as much space as the other phone even though my other phone was smaller it had a lot of space so we're transferring and later the night of my birthday and guess what everything halted so i had to go into my old phone and try to erase unnecessary things for me you know i have to go through that with a fine tooth comb because it's it's a, it's a lot of information it was on my other phone so it took over two days i finally my phone everything because it takes two hours to do the complete transfer so by the by the time i was finished going through with everything and then doing that um tuesday morning i got 
my phone. I finally got my phone. So I just want to tell you, and trust me, I've, it's been a busy week for me. I've been out. I get home late and I'm tired. So I haven't responded seriously. If you've called me after t Tuesday, you know, I've explained it to you. But if you haven't, then here's the explanation. And uh, my kids, my family can vote for me. You know, I wouldn't lie to you anyway. I mean, there's no reason to. I'm an adult. I have no reason to lie. Listen, I have to own up to whatever it is that I'm doing or not, right? We're children of God and we need to walk in truth. That's what the Bible says. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless each and every one of you. And I will go through and read when I get some time to do so. All righty. That being said, let me continue. It's communion morning. We're talking about the covenant of eating. Uh, it, it, it's it's germane to us. We're born, and we, as a matter of fact, we're eating since we're in the womb. So we take for granted eating. But I, I want you to pay special attention this morning about eating, right? And I, I just explained the Hebrew, and there's a reason why I had to go to the Hebrew. The Lord wanted it to be broken down. When we eat, as I said, the letters, the Hebrew letters that spell eat, there are pictures to each Hebrew letter. And so the, the, it's, it's Aleph, Kaf, Alamed. It's, I see, you can see where I'm going, right? The sacrificial ox, the Kaf, the open palm of the hand, and Lamed, the shepherd's staff. Now, as I said, in order for us to walk effectively in authority, we need to follow instructions, right? Everything comes with instructions. So that's where I was. My phone came with instructions. The laptop came with instructions. The camera came with instructions. Everything comes with instructions. Every piece of equipment we buy comes with instructions. Even the products we use comes with instructions. Am I right or wrong? Every single thing, our medication, if you're taking medication, it comes with instructions. So let me ask you a question. Why then would we not follow the instructions in the Bible of how to live an effective life, right? So come with me. Come with me. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I, let me tell you, I'm so excited. Woo, I am so excited. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen, eating, as I stated before, we we don't start eating when we're born. We start eating since we're in the womb. Isn't that amazing? Now, to eat, we must chew our foods 30, 32 times in order for our food to be properly digested. How many people chewed 32? Listen, I'm not going to lie, Bishop. I have tried. I remember I learned this in high school. I did. I learned this in high school back in Jamaica. And I tried to chew my food. It, it did not work. <laughs> how, how many people, when you learned that, tried that? Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I am telling you, 32 times. I, I, did, I did not get there. I'm not lying. I, I have not gotten there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... It's, 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 it's just like, what? And, you know, I'm chewing and counting. I'm, I'm being purposeful. I remember trying that, but it just never worked. So anyway, but the thing is, chewing helps us to convert our food into a, an absorbable form so that we can um, absorb the nutrients, we can get the nutrients that we need, right? Because the purpose of eating is, is so we can continue living. As I said before, if you have no appetite, check it out. Something is wrong because that's going in the opposite direction. God gave us our appetites for a reason. Not to overeat, by the way, but to eat. So that we, <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God. So we, listen, 
The same way we need to chew the physical food, sons and daughters of God. We need to chew it in order for us to digest our foods to digest and for us to get the nutrients. We need to chew the word of God for revelation to come. Come with me. Come with me. I'm telling you. Now, the Hebrew word for meditate, sons and daughters of God, is haga. Haga. H-A-G-A-H. Do you know what it means? Literally, to chew your cud. Now, you're going to say, we don't have cuds. We're not a cow. The cow has cuds. The cow has four stomachs. The cow ruminates, it chews, it regurgitates, it brings it up, and, 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 and it continues and continues, and it breaks it down, and it gets every bit of nutrient out of it. I've, I've, I've told you the stats already of how long it takes for them to, to eat the grass, but it takes the rest of the day for them to break it down. Look at a cow. If you've seen, if you've been around cows, I grew up in Jamaica and our neighbors had cows. So I would see them doing this. They'd eat the grass and, and eat the hay and then they lay down and they chew and they chew and they, chew, you know, it, we need to do that with the word of God. I told you the Hebrew word is Aga, H-A-G-A-H, means to chew your cud. We are to chew the word of God. So, hallelujah, while, they, while it takes the, 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 the portion of the day it takes for them to eat, it takes them the rest of the day to chew their cud. Now, we must reflect, we must focus on, we must ponder over, right? We must think deeply about what we read when we read the word of God. We need to dwell on God's word. When we're, read, when we're reading the word, we ought to see Jesus, right? We ought to see him in the pages of the Bible. Huh? Hallelujah, glory to God. And then we need to ruminate on what he does for us. Do you know that for people who are abused, for people who are depressed, scientifically, and, and you can ask, you know, ask even your doctors about this. But, let, not but, that the, um, the thoughts, the negative thoughts that we think, we're ruminating. When we think negative thoughts, when we dwell on those negative thoughts, when you're going through difficulties and you're focused on the difficulty, it, whether it's a bad relationship, whether it's difficulties you've had in life, there's some folks who will sit, at, listen, I'm not saying, don't think about it, don't spend your time on it though. There are folks who, we, we all, everybody has gone through something. And when we sit and think about all the hurts, everyone who's hurt us, the pain of the past, when we ruminate on those thoughts, that's what we're doing. We're ruminating. It literally creates a path in our brain. And that's what causes the depression, the anxiety to be cyclical or to continue. As the psychologists and the psychiatrists and the, the doctors, this is a, a scientific fact. Now, what does God say that we ought to do? Come on, sons and daughters of God. Because we have to meditate on the word of God in order to create a new pathway for our thoughts to follow. And now science is catching up with that. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart. What? What does it say, Bishop? What does it say? As a man thinks in his heart. So he is. This is what we become. What we think. That's why we need to chew, meditate, haga on the word of God. When you read the, 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 the Psalms of David. If you read the Bible. You will see there are times you see the word igayon. It means, he's telling you, stop 
Don't just read through. He's saying stop. Selah. Stop. Pause. Meditate. He meditated on the word of God day and night. We ought not to run through. I, I've shared with you when the Lord said, just do the, Psalm 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I said, well, prove it to me, God. And I, I was just thinking about that. And I've been, listen, since then, I've, lit, I've been sitting there. God, you are my shepherd. Let me, I, I can't even begin to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring a message on that. Just that, though, just that sentence alone. When we meditate on the word of God, when we ruminate, when we think, when we chew. So, come with me. It's communion morning. And we're talking about the covenant of eating. Something that we do daily. A study conducted revealed that the average American spends one hour and seven minutes per day eating and drinking. Out of the hours we are awake. For some, it's more. For some, it's less, right? It doesn't really matter if it's more or less. What matters is eating is a necessary activity, sons and daughters of God, for our physical survival. Similarly, eating God's word is essential for our spiritual survival as well. The Bible tells us we are blessed reading the word of God, blessed hearing the word of God being read, right? Now, Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And listen to what the Bible says. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Are you telling me that eating is not an integral part of our everything? Did you ever notice there's a saying, some people will say, I'm eating it all up when, when people are talking. Um, have you ever heard that, Bishop? I'm eating it all up. When a person is speaking, they say, I'm eating it all up. Good morning, Shireen. And, and for those who will see this message after, for those who are not seeing the message, good morning, Reverend Lee, Reverend Love, Danette, all of you. I don't know what's happening. I, I, I give up. But God, you will see. <laughs> I know you want to be on the live, but you'll catch it afterwards. And, and you know, and or if you're on and I'm not seeing you, because that's the other thing. You know, some folks will text me and say, but I'm on. And I'm like, oh, I don't see you. All right, but to God be the glory. As long as you get this message, and I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel, Flow, F L O, Changajita, you can go there and share it for your loved ones afterwards because this is essential. Listen, when God gives us instructions on how to not just survive, but to thrive, to, 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 to become successful in life, to, to, to achieve and attain the things that he wants us to have, to have his blessings manifested in our lives. Because come on, do you think we're just reading God's word just for reading God's word? It ought to be manifested in our lives. As I said, I don't just speak the word of God just because I feel like coming in. Oh, I'm coming on to speak to the people because I like to hear my voice. I just want to be in your presence. Trust, I could be doing other things, right? But do you know, I mean, even if there are meetings that I have to go to, I'll say, like, not on Thursday mornings. I mean, if the meeting has to go on, it goes on without me. But if it's a meeting that I'm involved with and someone really wants me, and I'll say, no, not on Thursday mornings. Because this is a time I didn't select it. God selected it, allowed Bishop Anderson to say, on Thursday mornings, you'll come and bring the word on LOR radio. This happened when I was ill. Many mornings, I've told y'all this before, I would bring the word and go to sleep. When Bishop would call me and he says, Sister Florence, are you sleeping? Yes, I was sleeping. Because to bring the word took so much out of me. 
I would fall asleep. My family would literally come and move the laptop from me. They would prop me up. My husband used to clean me up seriously in the mornings and prepare me so I could bring the message. Because he was the first one who would wake up because he goes to work early. And, you know, by the time it's time for me to bring the message, my daughter would come or one of my sons would come and bring me some tea so I could drink that. So I could, you know, to God be the glory. So this I do for my heavenly Abba, the one who ordained and orchestrated all that. Okay. And because of Jesus, I give thanks. So I love this. I, it's called because of Jesus. You see me doing this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, you see, um, when we eat, right? When we eat, we burp, right? Bishop, when you have a good meal. In some cultures, if you don't burp, it means you did not enjoy their meal. And it's an insult. Seriously. Look it up. I'm not making this up. <laughs> everything is out there now on Google, so you can Google everything. Listen, so when we eat good foods and you burp, you know, many times when we're satisfied and that burp comes up, Bishop, you can smell what you ate, right? If a person is close enough to you, you can smell it. Can I say this then? When we see and read, and listen and meditate on the word of God. Whatever we see, whatever we listen to, whatever we read and hear we and meditate on, it enters where? Into our heart. When we eat, the food enters our stomach. When we eat the word of God or any other word for that matter, it enters into our heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Speaks. When what goes in our stomach, when our stomachs are filled and we're satisfied, we burp, huh? And we know what it is we ate. We remember, right? When we eat words and listen to whatever we listen to and hear and, 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 and meditate on, it gets into our heart and that's what's going to spill out of our mouths. It's going to, it's going to. It's going to. So, listen. If our hearts are filled with negative information that we have read, that we have ingested by listening to and meditating on, guess what? That's what we're going to sprout out of our mouths. And that is an odor. It carries an odor. The Bible says, and it's a stench to the nostrils of God. I'm not making this up. It's in the Bible. It's, it's a stench. Now, if you know anything about stench, only noxious, noxious things give off stenches, right? If you pass by some stagnant water, right? Uh, dead carrion, that is dead flesh, right? Uh, 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 anything pungent, these are the words that are affiliated with with these uh, pungent aromas, and you know, just the Bible said it's it's stench to the nostrils of God. And so, what are we supposed to? But where to, to do? Meditate on God's word. Scientists say that the neural pathway created by dwelling on negative words. By, by thinking negative thoughts can be overridden when we start thinking positive thoughts. How much more when we read, chew, ingest, meditate, listen to, and meditate on God's word. Beloved, I suggest we can have nothing else but favorable results. The Bible also tells us that the same, the same scripture that I read, that death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? Wise words, think about it. Wise words do satisfy like a good meal. The right words 
bring satisfaction, the tongue brings us life or death, sons and daughters of God. There is no two ways. It's either we're speaking life or we're speaking death. Life or death. That's it. There are no in-betweens. When you think there's an in-between, there is none. Every single word. The Bible said we're going to give account for every single word. The times when you could have spoken words of life. We ought to speak life. I mean, I think it's Damien Marley and his nephew. One of them. There's a collaboration. There's a song. It says, the song is speak life. Not your ordinary street life. Huh? You, here is this, these young men saying, speak life. When the Bible tells us to speak life. And we're going about speaking death. And this is, as Bishop was saying this morning, that, that the elected officials were saying there were over 182 gun deaths in New York City alone. Right? Since the year began. This is not from last year, by the way. And so Bishop was saying that, you know, folks are angry. Why do you think folks are angry? Can I, can I ask you that? Why do you think folks are angry? Folks are angry because of what they're, the information that they're being fed. The information. Huh? They watch the news. Is the news good on television? I'm not saying don't watch the news. We ought to be informed. But once you start meditating on all the negative things that are happening, when you sit down and you meditate on the negative things that happen in your life, it could take you down the, the, the rabbit hole, the proverbial rabbit hole. It could take you down a wrong path. It can make you depressed. huh? It can make you angry. But when you say, you know what? this is happening or this has happened but this is not who i am this is not where it ends and you move on when you process it and you move on we have to process it and and and, and as i keep telling you my bible says cast all all means all your cares upon the Lord. And let me tell you something. It takes strength to cast your cares upon the Lord. People think that it's a weak person. Let me tell you something. Christianity is not a religion for the faint of heart or the weak or the stupid. Let me tell you, when you start reading the word of God, you become more wise. You become wiser. Okay? You become wiser. There are instructions in the word of God on how to, con how to have better health. Huh? How to be wise. Huh? How to become wealthy. Everything you need. How to raise your children. How to have successful marriages. Anything you need. In the pages of the manual for life. That we ought to speak. But instead, we speak as soon as something happens. We speak that, oh, and then and we pass, oh, Lord. Isn't this how most of us are? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We don't say, wait a minute. Daddy, you see what's happening? Because he's not just our God. And we know he has all the power, right? Daddy, you see what's happening. What is your word saying? How, how do I go about this? Huh? Sometimes it's so simple. Cast all means consult with him first. Huh? We get up and we consult with the, let me consult with the Google. Let me consult with the, um, whatever, the TikTok and everybody else. We don't, we haven't spoken to God yet. But let me tell you something. When we consult God, you know, something happened um, on, on Tuesday. And uh, I, I was a little disappointed, not going to lie. No, I was more than a little bit disappointed. I was. I was. And I was speaking to the person. And I said, um, okay. Mm. All right. And after I got off the phone, I said, Daddy, y'all know by now <laughs> when I do that. And then I went on. I was still a little disappointed. So when I left the house... You know, I was a lot disappointed at first, but then I cast it. I realized I didn't 
totally cast all of it because when I was driving after I left the home, after I left home, I was like, you know, Daddy, I didn't like how that went. But I gave it to you. And then I realized just like that. I went on and I started to praise the Lord. I, I really did. I literally started to give praise. I, did I tell you about giving the Lord a thousand praises? Let me tell you. Who's tried it? Come on. If you've tried it, come back here and write it on the blog or call me up. Messenger. Let me tell you something. When you give God a thousand praises, the psalmist David gave God, a, he, that, that, that just liberated me. He said, I give you a thousand praises. I was like, can I do a thousand praises? But let me tell you something. This is how foolish we are. Okay, maybe not you. This is how foolish I was. Let me talk about myself. This is how foolish I was. When I, I had to reread this like three times, right? Because I was like, wait. You gave God a thousand praises. It just seemed like it was a whole lot. In my ear, you know, it probably sounded like a million. You understand what I'm saying? I was like, a thousand praises? Oh, that's a lot. Like, really? And then, like that, I'm like, wait a minute. If he can do it, I can do it. I meant if it took me days, I was going to. Can I tell you? Can I tell you this? In two minutes, you can give the Lord a hundred praises in two minutes. So you calculate it because you're all brilliant people of God. Listen, let me tell you, how, how long you think it would take you to give the Lord a, a thousand praises? If in two minutes, you can give him a hundred praises. When I tell you, I gave him a thousand hallelujahs. Just doing that, I can't even tell you. Other things that I needed to bring to the Lord, I didn't even have to. I didn't have to say, Daddy, this, can you fix this? Can you do this? I need this. Nothing. I didn't have to. He was just like, here. Yeah, I am so serious. I'm not trying to make this up. I will not lie on God. It profits me nothing to lie on God, really. Because I don't want to miss out on my blessings. I tell you that. So try it. So I'm telling you, so I, you know, I, I, I'm driving and I, I said, wait a minute. I did that thousand praises. I did the thousand hallelujahs. I'm going to give another thousand. And I did. Well, long story short. <laughs> Let me tell you. And God, I always say, there is no box around our God. He, there really isn't. He will do things not how you expect him to do it. And so... Not that day. Oh, I got a lot of blessings on that very day. But not that day. But two days later. Two days later, guess what happened? No, actually no. The very next day, yes. Thank you, Lord. I stand corrected. The very next day. That issue that I was disappointed about got resolved. Glory to God. Oh, in such an unexpected way. I am telling you. We just need to give it to the Lord and leave it there. A lot of times we panic when we, if we think, you know, um, there is a deadline on this thing or something. You know, we, we're like, well, okay, I, I would panic. Let me put me, because I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're calm and you're cool and you're collected. Like when things, yeah. But I, I, I would like be like, what am I going to, you know? That's how. And really, seriously, this is how I honestly used to be just 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 be in an instant panic and the thing about when you get in an instant panic your emotions and everything your, your biorhythm you're setting your body off so so for me it would send my pressure up right it, it just like then i'd get anxious let me tell you hold your peace let daddy fight your battle for you oh that that listen when you just say you know what daddy here and you give it to him and you go about. You have to cook your food, cook your food, play some music, celebrate Jesus, okay? Have a praise party and a dance while you're doing your cooking. You're doing the laundry, same thing. You're driving, same thing. Listen, this is what I've learned to do. I'm telling you, so it becomes different now. So I can easily give it to him rather than, you know, like, like I said, you have the disappointment. I was disappointed greatly then it got to a little and then it was gone before it would i would be throughout the entire day the next day 
you can ask my family. They'd be hearing it and say, Mom, you said it already. <laughs> my husband would be like, Flo. <laughs> that, that's when I don't get the hun. It's like Flo. Like when I hear my name, you know, when I hear my name, I'm like, okay, I think I've crossed the line. But sons and daughters of God, the thing is, we need to meditate, chew on God's word. It's about, it's communion, about eating the, 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 the word of God. So as I said, the word eat, good morning, Sister Danette, hallelujah, glory to God. The word eat is hakal, hokel, and I can't do the guttural, but as I said before, it is aleph, kaf, lamed, right? The sacrificial ox, the palm of the hand, the shepherd's staff, which um, denotes authority. Now, the thing is, the sacrificial ox is who? Jesus, excuse me, whose palms were pierced? Who has the nail pierced palm? Jesus. Who's the good shepherd? Jesus. Do you see what I'm saying? Eat. You think about this. We eat every day. The Bible says our temple is the temple of the living God. Yet we put whatever we feel like putting in it. When the very word eat is about Christ Jesus himself. This is why I had to go to the Hebrew. Well, the Lord brought me there. And I had to share it with you. I had this a while. I was just sitting in it. I was just like, man, this is so beautiful. And let me tell you something. When you learn this, you learn to eat differently. Seriously. Because you're like, wait, what I'm eating is with you, Jesus? Mm. All right. So anyway, eating is all about Jesus. The one who holds us together so we don't fall apart. He strengthens our bodies. He strengthens our nerves. He strengthens our minds. And him, the word of God tells us in the book of Colossians, we are held together. You see, when adversities come, he prevents us from being destroyed. Do you remember what I tell you, told you? The meaning, one of the meanings of the word eat is to destroy. See, Adversities, adversities come to eat us alive. That's what adversities are there for. To destroy, to eat up our lives. To destroy our lives. Eat. The word eat means to what? To ingest, to chew, to swallow. Right? Or to destroy. So when adversities come, what do you think they come to do? To prosper us? No. No. Only when God turns them around. Only when God turns them around. Because what the enemy means for evil, as Joseph said, God will turn around for good. And we see Joseph's life. When his brothers threw him in the pit, first they wanted to kill him, and God wouldn't allow it because God knew he was going to be their deliverer. Remember, he had given the dream, and he had told Abraham that his descendants would be imprisoned. But God would deliver them through one of his descendants. So listen, whatever happens in our lives, do you think it's happening by happenstance? Trust God some more, brothers and sisters of God. Trust God, children of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, when adversities come, Christ Jesus, he undergirds us. Hallelujah. You understand. And he prevents us from being destroyed. He prevents us from being eaten. Remember what um, in the book of Isaiah, I told you this, that when our feet are dusty, the Bible, we become, when we are dusty, we become the serpent's meal. It's in the, I, I brought that message already. Uh, uh, don't get dusty. Read the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? Because the word of God, the Bible tells us, cleanses us. It washes us. The Bible tells us this. Hallelujah. If we don't shower and you do work, you're going to smell funky. Don't care who you are. You could be the most beautiful person wearing the most expensive perfume. It will not cover that odor. We need, we all need to shower physically in the name of Jesus so 
eating sons and daughters of God is in our DNA. As I said before, babies in the womb, they start eating, they're fed. Science, and for all those who are mothers, you know this, the umbilical cord brings oxygen and food to the babies. All of us, all of us, what? All of us, we need the oxygen and we need food, all of us. So, as I said before, what are we eating? What are we putting into the temple that, that where God dwells? Uh, our progenitors, they ate their way, in, way into problems. Adam and Eve, they ate their way into problems, into troubles, poverty, stress, separation from God and sickness and death. They did. And though we inherited that, God has given us a way back to him, the way of blessings, the way of good health, the way of sustenance, the way of life, the way of to wealth, the way to peace, the way to salvation. And it is all through whom? Christ Jesus. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. Definite article, right? You know when you say the, you're speaking about a specific thing. Go to the bookstore means not the bank, not the supermarket, but the bookstore, right? Definite article. Yeah, we all remember our English a little bit. Some of us, it's been many years, but God, hallelujah, glory to God. Now, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 tells us, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with the temptation, now specific, with the temptation, also make the way of escape. Who do you think your escape is? That ye may be able to bear it. Who is your escape? The one and only. Christ Jesus, Yeshua Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were told they could eat from every tree, including the tree of life, who is Christ Jesus, but they chose not to. And so, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus drank the cup of trembling, which was to our destruction. You can see Isaiah 51 and 22 about that. So, we can drink of the cup of blessing to be restored to life. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through 17 reads, The cup of blessing which we bless, and this today is the cup of blessing, hallelujah, glory to God, praise the Lord. Uh, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread we break, the bread, see it's broken, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread. We're one body in Christ Jesus, right? For we are all partaker of that one bread. We're all partakers of Christ Jesus, the communion meal. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's a covenant in eating. Ah, hallelujah. That you know, if you don't believe there's a covenant in eating, go into the Asian restaurants or stores, even many that do nails. You may not see them in, in some of the nail salons today, but some of the smaller nail salons, look, you will see the statue of Buddha with some fruit, some food. Let me ask you, and something to drink. Can Buddha eat? Can he see? Can he do anything? It's a statue. Can I ask you, let's not even ask that question. Who made him? Did somebody make the Buddha that's sitting there on the shelf with the food and around it? If you made the thing, then you, in essence, should be its God, lowercase g. You see where I'm going with this. 
I'm just saying. It's just a reality. It's a fact. But the God, the one and only true and living Hakad, who created us, we don't have to feed him. He feeds us. Hallelujah. A hey, glory. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 10, 18 through 22 reads. Behold Israel after the flesh. Are they are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? That the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. But I say that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Remember, a Gentile is an unsaved person, not a race of people. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Bible. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And so, a lot of communion, when, when it's communion time, folks say that people are eating and drinking to their own damnation. When you eat of the Lord and drink at the, at the Lord's table, the communion meal, and then you go and you eat and you drink to other idols. What do you think you're doing? It's right there in the Word of God. For years I've been saying something that have been revealed to me, right? Covenants are formed during eating. They are. Do you realize when you have to, when you, if you're buying a house, I don't know, Bishop, if when you were buying your house, the, the, you know, but when uh, sometimes when you go to, you, there are cookies. You know, they'll give you water. The more upscale, the more, the more uh, 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 risk that is pertaining to a deal, the more investments yield that will be returned, those are held over meals. And sometimes even with drinks, alcoholic drinks. Why? Because sometimes they don't need you. If one's scamming you, they don't need you to be in sound, sane mind. They don't need you to read the fine print. They just need you to sign that, 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 that contract. But thank God for Jesus that we don't sign a contract because he makes covenants. And we have to be aware of spiritual covenants that are being formed. There are people who will hold dinners for their ancestors that are dead. They will hold dinners for this and for that. That is not unto God. Be careful. Know who you're eating with and why you're eating with them. Because covenants are made during eating. So, listen. The covenant, the main covenant of eating is to sustain life. So isn't it time we start seeing the manifestation of the blessings of this covenant in our lives? Today, let's eat, let's achal, ochel, the communion meal with the revelation that every part of our eating is about Jesus. So as I close, and I'm turning this over to Bishop, let me read to you Luke 22, 14 through 20. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat together at the table. Covenant time, right? <laughs> oh, my God, my God. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my sufferings begin. Remember, I told you, I've been saying this, it's the last meal Jesus had. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink this wine again until the kingdom of God has come. 
He then took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces. And he gave it to the disciples saying, This is my body. This is the body of Jesus, which I've given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, do you realize Jesus said to them, this is before he went to the cross, this is my body, which is given for you. Given for your body and my body to be healed, not just the disciples. Come on. And so he says, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup, this cup, is the what? The new covenant. Come on. Covenant time. When you eat and drink, there's a covenant there. Is that covenant unto God or is it unto the devil? Huh? Think about your covenants. Think about what you're eating and drinking. It's not that you can't enjoy food. Uh, but we need to be cognizant of what we're doing more important we ought to hear from God what it is we ought to eat what it is we ought to drink who we must eat with whom we must drink with so the word of God says after supper he took the other cup of wine and said another cup and he said this is my new covenant this is the, the new covenant between God and his people, between God and us. An agreement confirmed by my blood, an agreement confirmed by the blood of Jesus, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Today, when we hachal or hell, the body of Jesus, huh? when we drink of his blood, we are partaking of the communion meal. In doing this, we have entered into a covenant. The covenant of eating. The covenant of eating. Our way out of sickness. Our way out of poverty. Our way out of distress. Our way out of death. Our way out of sickness. Our way out of everything that is not of God. Because when we eat the body of the sacrificial ox, the one whose open palm was pierced with a nail. And it's, it's real, we say nail, but it's really a, a tent peg. Huh? He uses his staff, the symbol of authority. He uses his authority to guide us into victory hallelujah glory to god and amen let me just say some hallelujahs before i turn it over to you bishop hallelujah 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 glory hallelujah hallelujah glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah glory hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh -oh. First, sorry, First Corinthians. Yeah. So, in in reading First Corinthians uh, eleven twenty three through thirty one, it reads thus: For I pass unto you that which I received from the Lord Himself. 
On the night which he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat and drink this bread and drink eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. For anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body of the blood of the Lord. And remember, I have to tell you, it's not the commune eating and drinking the com eating the taking the communion meal that makes you um, guilty of sinning. You understand. It's when you're partaking of unto other gods along with this and when we take the communion meal not discerning the Lord's body which it tells us in here so we have to know that it because he took every piece every every sickness every every from us in his body on the cross of Calvary and his blood his blood pays for our sins our iniquities Glory to God for the remission of the sins it's in payment to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so continue reading the word of God. Hallelujah. This is why we sh you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat this bread or drink this cup without honoring the body of Christ, you see, if you're not honoring the body of Christ, you're eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. This is why, that is why, Many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But thank God for Jesus. When we eat, the covenant of eating is what? To sustain life. Hallelujah. So when we're eating the communion meal, it's for life. Glory to God. But if we should examine ourselves, we should not be judged by God in this way. Yet when you are judged by the Lord, we will be disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Remember that when God looks at us, he has to see Jesus. We cannot examine ourselves. Only Christ can. Okay? Just want to say that. So, my dear brothers and sisters, when you gather for the Lord's Supper, wait for each other. If you are really hungry, eat at home so you won't bring judgment upon yourselves. When you meet together, I'll give you instructions about other matters after I arrive. And we thank God that we already have the instructions here in the word of God. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his word. We thank him for his blessings. We thank him for the communion meal in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. The true brother can't God. You never can't. The true brother can't I will be here from generation to generation. Yes, and Father God, that which you have passed on to us, God will never change. It still has the same power, still has the same effect, God. And we thank you for the meal that heals, that reconciles, that restores our soul. We thank you, God, that those who are going to participate today, God, that the same effect from generation to generation will be upon this communion we today, God, in the name of Jesus. You are in your virtue, you are true to God. You are loved. Everything you need to say, we thank God for this day, that we are able to participate in your body, one spirit. One lack of them, one seed, one God. Father, we thank you as we lift up your body. In the remembrance that you die to give us life. And Father, that life is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, as we have said, Father, do you in your time to Jesus? Before he was even yet manifest in the world, let us made man. In our own image and likeness. But now we are only speaking to Jesus Christ. Because the Father loved the Son and showed him all that he does. So we thank you 
blessing the body of Christ as we partake. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this bread, blessing our bread, blessing the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, take. Likewise, Jesus, we thank you for blessing the cup of blessing, for drinking the cup of trembling, and for giving us the cup of blessing, your blood, hallelujah, that paid for the remission of our sins, and now we drink. We know the life of the flesh is in the blood. We thank you in Jesus' name before his sake. Amen. So, sons and daughters of God, we thank God for the communion meal today. We have eaten, we have participated in the covenant of eating unto life. And so, we thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for each and every one who will come on, those who are on the live, those who will listen to the message after. If there be any illness in their bodies, Lord God, Father, we have participated in the new covenant. We've eaten your body. We've drank your blood. And now, as we participate in the covenant of eating unto life, we thank you for breathing new life into all our bodies. Thank you for healing Bishop's body, Father of the cold in the mighty matchless name of Jesus and we are mindful to give you all the praise all the glory and the honor that no matter what anyone is going through whether it be a mental malady a physical ailment you are God over all and nothing is too hard for you and so we thank you Lord no matter what the ailment may be whether it's silent whether it's 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 chronic well, it's, 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 it's exhibiting itself. You take care of it all. No plagues shall come near our dwellings, according to your word. Not the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the plagues, nor the nothing. No arrows that fly by day. Nothing. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, to, go ahead, Bishop. Uh, we want to thank each and every one for coming in, for participating. We thank God for your faithfulness to Almighty God. We thank God for your obedience to sell it to his career, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul. We thank God for your love, you know that I do love you. So, thank you for your love. be the glory so this morning everyone I thank you all for um, sorry I thank you all for tuning in and no matter what time this message reaches you whether it reaches you tomorrow yesterday today tonight I pray that you too will receive your healing whatever it is you too will receive your blessing from God when you participate in 
in the covenant of eating. Have yourself a blessed and wonderful day. Know that I do love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much more. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe. Stay good. And remember, watch what you eat. Because eating is all about Christ Jesus. Thank you for hearing and sharing. Share this message. Share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Share it. Send it to them in in Messenger. And as I said, I'm going to upload it to my YouTube page. So uh, my YouTube channel, Flo, F-L-O, Chang Ajita. You can go there, upload it. and uh, I'll upload it. You can send it to your uh, loved ones as well. Have yourself a blessed and a wonderful day. Thank you, Sister Danette. Thank you, Sister Shireen Stover. It's great seeing you guys. I pray you guys receive not just a blessing, a healing as well, and all that God has in store for you, okay? And thank you, Bishop, for putting up the scriptures and whatever, all the things you've put up. And um, you get some rest. Make sure you, you drink your, uh, your lemon with honey or, you know, or not you can you can you can put a little honey in um a, a little bit of uh manuka manuka honey you should try that um to god be the glory all right okay Bishop, you're funny. <laughs> Bishop says some roast bread fruit would make him feel better. That's what he just said to me. <laughs> Right, he said, "Man made bread, but God made bread food, and that's true. Bread food is really good. So God be the glory." <laughs> oh, Bishop. <laughs> all right. Okay, and God bless y'all too. Okay, have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. All right. Okay.